Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and it is a blustery February day today. It is eight degrees. Thank goodness there's no wind, otherwise it would be a lot colder feeling. Um, but I am out on my deck, and I just wanted to um, take you for a walk through the garden today and just show you, although there's not a lot of color, I just wanted to show you some of the plants and what they look like here in the winter. So I'm going to go walk around to the front of the house and head out back, uh, but I wanted to just show you what the back looks like here from the back of the house to start with before we mess up all the pretty snow. So this is the area I'm going to be walking through here in just a few minutes once I get down to the to the backyard. Uh, but I wanted to show you just kind of what the layout of the land is if you haven't watched any of my videos previously. Um, this is our backyard. We have about between a half an acre and three quarters of an acre of space. Um, and then pretty much in this whole backyard, we've got different pockets and such of little gardens uh, that we use for our flowers and our shrubs. So I'm gonna go ahead and head down there and we'll talk a little bit about some of these shrubs when we get up close and personal with them. So I'm gonna start the video off in the front of the house here and you're gonna see some of my winter evergreens and such in the planters. Um, we have about 18 or so inches of snow on the ground. So I have my son's boots on so that hopefully my pants will stay dry um, but I'm going to talk about some of the plants as we're going through so to start off with you can see we got my hanging baskets up here these are the lighted hanging baskets and I just took some evergreens from out in the yard and snipped them and then also you'll notice there's some red twig dogwood in there and that just kind of gives a little pop of color along with those red Christmas balls so like I said it is February so maybe I should remove those Christmas balls but we'll go with maybe they're there for Valentine's Day. Whatever works, right? Uh, and then here is my front porch pot that I created. It's got some limelight hydrangeas in there, along with the red twig dogwood, some ornamental grasses, and then again, evergreens that I found out in the backyard. So that's holding up pretty good in the winter. Um, I love how the snow catches on those hydrangeas. It just adds a little extra effect to the winter porch pots. In the front here, we have our bobo hydrangeas. These we left the flowers on, and these are the only ones we've left the flowers, well, almost the only ones we've left the flowers on. And I think it looks really pretty how the snow catches on those flowers. So that's why I do like to leave some of the flowers on because it just catches the snow and adds a little bit of winterist, winterist, winter interest to the shrubs. All right, trudging through the snow. So this here is a lilac tree, and it looks kind of pretty how the snow is kind of caught down in there and created little pockets. So the lilac tree we do not trim because we would be trimming off the buds for the previous season's, or for next season's growth. I'm gonna go in closer and you can see, maybe this is better, those little nubs, those are all the flowers for next year. So the snow is much deeper than what I thought. It is over the top of my boots. So this is gonna be a fun walk. So I'm on the side of the house, up there at the top. That is a quick fire hydrangea. We left the blooms on that. And you can see how they're really collecting the snow and looking pretty. Along the side here, it is freezing. Along the side here are bobo hydrangeas. These, they're about two foot tall and you can see the shape that they're trimmed back to. Along the house there, that is a little lamb hydrangea. And I love how the snow has collected on that plant. It looks like beautiful flowers. Pretend it's summer, I guess. This here is the Invincible, I believe this is Invincible Ruby hydrangea. This is a smooth hydrangea, so you can see it's been trimmed back, which is fine because the smooth hydrangea, they bloom off of the new season's growth. As we walk through, we'll see the butterfly bush here. This is lo and behold blue chip, and we don't trim butterfly bush back because in zone five here, we wanna leave as much on there as we can for insulation. So once we see this start coming back from the base in the spring, we'll go ahead and trim all that old foliage off. So if you've ever watched my summer videos, you know this garden here looks very different than what it does in the summer. So in here, the middle thing that you're seeing there, that is a limelight hydrangea tree. So it's been trained into tree form. Sometimes they're called a standard. 
and we trimmed that back for the last probably three years because we really want to bulk it up and branch it up so that it's a nice full plant and doesn't droop in the summer. There we have the Bloomerang Dwarf Purple Lilac. And you'll notice this here one here is also, you'll notice this hasn't been trimmed back because we don't want to trim off the buds for this coming summer. It's just so pretty how the snow has collected inside these plants and just creates, I don't know, looks like cotton candy or little marshmallows. It's so pretty. This here is the Atlas Rose and that too has been trimmed back and is definitely collecting snow. So this snow is a lot deeper than I had originally thought. <laughs> it's well over 18 inches deep back here. We're gonna head back to the butterfly garden. You can see I've kind of made a path here already. Um, one thing with a butterfly garden is right now there's not a lot of color, but there are birds. So the bushes that are in here, uh, the birds like to go in. You'll also notice there's some bird houses. So what I do for the winter is I like to add things to the garden that add color. So you can see those bird houses, they add a really cool um, splash of color here against all the white. So you'll notice that there are little elements in this garden that bring color to it in the winter. So the plants in front of us here, this is another Bobo Hydrangea and flowers have been cut off, but it almost looks like it's flowering with those little puffs of snow. <clears throat> Next to it here is the bud uh, butterfly bush. This is Miss Molly. And again, you can see we didn't trim it back because we're leaving it on there um, until the spring. When we see the new growth come, then we'll go ahead and trim all that dead off. So here in our zone five garden, butterfly bush generally don't come back from that old growth. There's a clematis in the back there. We kept that on the trellis. The shrub here in front of us is the uh, this is the Wajila uh, Sonic Bloom Pink. That's a rebloomer, and that one we trim back um, also. You can kind of see the shape that we have it there. It's about three and a half foot tall is what we have it trimmed back to. Next to it is the Firelight Hydrangea. And again, that one's trimmed back to about three and a half, four foot tall as well. You'll notice a blue bottle tree in the background. I think that's kind of pretty. It's probably up for debate if bottle trees are tacky or not, but I like that one because it's blue. So it does really add an element to this winter garden. So from other videos, this would be the Hasta corner. Obviously Hasta's die back, so there's not a whole lot to show there. Uh, we'll head over to the garden shed. I am so thankful I have my son's boots on right now because my feet would be freezing in mine. You'll notice there's a teal garden bench. Again, another something that adds element of color to this area. And the garden shed too. I mean, it's pretty, it's not big, but from the house, it's, it's a decent size. So it really stands out nice against all the white and the brown back in this area. So there's a pond here somewhere, I'm hoping I don't find it. I'll be the first to know, you'll be the second. All right, I think I'm good. So planted on either side of this garden shed are little lime hydrangeas, and they've been cut back to about four foot. This here is the incredible hydrangea. We trimmed that one back. We probably took about a third off of the height of that one. Another bobo. You can tell I like bobos. Oh, now, now the tricky part is remembering what's what. Uh, this is Invincible Spirit Hydrangea. That's about two foot tall. You'll notice there's some casualties in the back there. So I've got two pretty tall ar um, arbors, trellises, whatever, and the wind takes some things down every winter. So I have to make sure to put them back up again before the clematis start growing. Otherwise, the clematis will be scattered all over the ground. Uh, this here is a spirea. I think we just kind of trimmed just a little bit off that to give it some shape. 
that tall columnar plant, that is a rhamnus fine line. So those, even though they lose all their leaves, they really add some pretty nice columnar structure out in the garden. So, and these things are super hardy. Um, I believe it's zone three. It might even be zone two. So if you're in the cold, cold north, that plant should grow well for you. This here is a proudberry shrub, and this had done really good like all winter long. So let's go in and take a look what the berries look like. These have pink berries on them when they're in the prime, which is kind of in the fall. Right now, yeah, the berries are all brown. So, but they're cute little snow catchers. Adds a little wispy whimsy look with, to that plant. Uh, this is a plant that you should check out if you've never grown proudberry. Go online and look it up. It's a sweet plant for the fall. Uh, our clematis grow on this fence here, which we've stripped of all the clematis. It needs to get repaired. This chicken wire kind of has broken down over time. So my goal is to get that fixed before the clematis get up that high this spring. So hopefully that happens. This here is the wine and roses wajila. This one we did not trim back. You can see it's a pretty dense plant. It's about five foot across and four foot tall. And limelight hydrangea. This one we have in shrub form. This one has been trimmed back to about five foot. Then we'll head up to the back of the house and see what else we have. All right, so we'll end right here. This here is a clematis. And you can see we left the branches all on there, along with the one there up against the shed. So these bloom off of old and new growth. So sometimes we trim them back. Sometimes we leave them. This year we left them. An ornamental grass. You can see how this makes kind of a nice place for maybe animals to go in and warm up and hide. They haven't been there though because I haven't seen any tracks. So that's good. And this here is our tough stuff hydrangea. This was not trimmed back because you don't want to trim back your mountain hydrangeas or your big hydrangeas. So here's why. That there, right, let's see if we can, there. That is the bud for next season's growth. So if we trim these things back in the fall, we would lose all of our flowers. So you don't wanna trim your big leaf and your mountain hydrangeas in the fall. In the spring, if you have dead sticks, go ahead and trim them out, but don't trim them because they've got a bud that is your flower for next season. So this is where we've been, trudging through the back garden. Hope you enjoyed this garden tour today. I am freezing and you can probably hear it in my voice. I am just like so cold, but I think it's worth it because I think that, you know, hopefully you learned something um, of what I've done with my shrubs in the fall for the winter, for the upcoming spring. So hopefully you find that some, some information that is useful for you. If you haven't had a chance yet to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do that. That way you'll be the first to be notified when a new video is posted. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings, enjoying, not really, this winter snow.